In today's video lesson, we're going to learn how to perform some acid-base calculations. So first of all, we're going to talk about the effect of temperature on water's equilibrium constant. So water dissociates in the following manner. So water breaks apart into proton and hydroxide ion, and the delta H for that is positive 57.3 kilojoules per mole, which means it's an endothermic reaction. So that value at 298 Kelvin, Kw is 1.0 times 10 to the power of negative 14, which means that the pH is 7. However, as temperature rises, the system will shift to the right because it's shifting away from the heat term and the pH of water will decrease. So when we've been told all our lives that the pH of water is 7 of pure water, that's at 298 Kelvin. At higher temperatures, it will not be 7. So if we look at this graph, we can look at the equilibrium constant at different temperatures, and you can see that it starts um, low, so around 0 it is, and going towards 20 degrees it is 7, or 10 to the negative 14, and then it starts to decrease as you go to higher temperatures. So the equilibrium constant is increasing, which means that the pH is decreasing. So now we're going to talk about the acid dissociation constant, or Ka. So the dissociation of weak acid is as follows. We have Ha plus water makes hydronium ion and the anion. Um, if we were to find out or calculate the equilibrium constant, we would do the following. So we would have Kc is equal to the hydronium ion times the anion. And those are one to one molar amounts. And then that's all divided by the acid and water. But here's the thing. Water's, the concentration of water is really large, so we consider that constant. So then we would rewrite this equation to be this. So we move the water over beside the equilibrium constant and then combine it with the equilibrium constant. So then we're going to rewrite that to be Ka, so the equilibrium constant for an acid, for the dissociation of the acid, is equal to the concentration of the hydronium ion times the concentration of the anion all over the concentration of the acid. Now remember, with your chemical equations, you do need to bear in mind the coefficients. So if one of these had a coefficient of 2, you would square that concentration. So just remember that. So remember, just like the equilibrium constant, Kc, Ka is constant at a given temperature, and it tells us the acid's strength. So a high Ka value means the acid is stronger, and it will dissociate more, and that will be helpful in our calculations. So now we're going to practice calculating the base dissociation constant. So the dissociation of a weak base is shown here. So this reaction. So again, we would leave water out of the equation and our Kb would be this. So concentration of BH times hydroxide all over the concentration of the base. So again, Kb is constant at a given temperature, and then it tells us the base strength. So a high Kb value means the base is stronger and will dissociate more. So now we'll try an example. So we have a 0.0100 mole per liter solution of a weak acid at 298 Kelvin has a pH of 4.17, and we're being asked to calculate the Ka, or the equilibrium constant of the acid. So there's our reaction. 
And the first thing that we need to do is find the concentration of hydrogen or protons. So that is equal to 10 to the negative pH, if you remember. And that is equal to 10 to the negative 4.17 which is equal to 6.76 times 10 to the negative 5 moles per liter. Our second step involves us trying to solve for Ka. So remember, Ka is equal to the hydronium ion times the anion all over the acid. So we can remember that the amount of hydronium ion will be equivalent to the amount of the anion. So that is going to be 6.76 times 10 to the negative 5 times, multiply that two times by itself, or squared, all over the 0 0.0100. And that is equivalent to 4.57 times 10 to the negative 7. And it's a small value. So that allows us to understand that Ka, this must be a weak acid because it's a very small Ka. So we can also use pKa and pKb, very much like pH and pOH. So that tells us the relative strength of a weak acid or base. Because these values are really small, like we saw in the example before, it is much simpler to deal with their negative logarithms instead. So to find pKa would be negative log of the, the equilibrium constant and the same for pKb. If we, wanted to, if we had the pKa and we wanted to find the equilibrium constant, that would be equal to 10 to the negative pKa or 10 to the negative pKb. So those values are much easier to use than you know, expressing 1.67 times 10 to the power of negative 8 using a smaller number would be much easier. So the negative logarithm. So to help you understand the relationship between pKa and Ka and pKb and Kb, I use this image from Cognity. So if you look here, as the Ka increases, going from a weak acid to a strong acid, the Ka will increase, but that also means the pKa will decrease. And that's very similar to pH too. The strength of an acid, as it increases, the pH decreases. So very, very similar. And then the same thing for weak bases. As the pKb decreases, that means that it's going from a weaker to a stronger base, and the Ka, Kb, sorry, will be increasing as well. So, if you want to find a range of pK and pKb values at any time, they're found in section 21 of the IB data booklet. And you'll, if you need to use those on an assessment, you would be referred to look at those values in the data booklet. So if we were to look at the conjugate pairs of the acids and bases, um, we know that Ka times Kb equals the concentration of hydrogen ions times the concentration of hydroxide ions, which we also know is equal to Kw. So if you took the negative log of both sides, that means that pKa and pKb equals pKw, which also means then because Kw is 1.00 times 10 to the negative 14, pKw will be 14. So pKa plus pKb equals 14 at 298 Kelvin, just like pH and pOH. So when we're doing acid-base calculations, we have to make two assumptions. One, strong acids and bases will dissociate fully into ions, so we'll take their initial concentrations to calculate the pH or the pOH. So, and secondly, weak acids and bases don't dissociate well, so we'll have to calculate their Ka or Kb value and use that as their initial concentration. So we need to pay attention to what type of acid or base we're working with to know how to perform the calculation in the first place. So our first example we're gonna practice with 
is the equilibrium constant for ethanoic acid or acetic acid, which is CH3COOH, is 1.8 times 10 to the negative 8 at 25 degrees Celsius. So we're being asked to calculate the pH of a 0 0.10 mole per liter solution of ethanoic acid. So this is our balanced chemical equation right there. And this ethanoic acid or acetic acid, which is known as vinegar, is a weak acid. So it doesn't fully dissociate into ions. So we are going to have to find the Ka, use the Ka as our initial concentration. So for this, we know Ka and we know the concentration of the acid before dissociation. So we need to calculate the concentration of hydrogen. So Ka is equal to CH3COO minus, the concentration of that, times the concentration of hydrogen ions, all over the concentration of the acid. Okay, so we have that. Then we plug in the values we know. We know the equilibrium constant, 1.8 times 10 to the negative 5. And we know that the concentration of the two um, ions will be equal because they're one-to-one -one ratios. So that's going to be x squared. So x times x. We're just going to substitute that. And then 0 0.10 for the concentration of the acid. I forgot to put the square bracket. Um, and then we will solve. So that's going to be, we mul bring, multiply the 0 0.1 by the point. 1.8 times 10 to the negative 5 to isolate x squared. So 1.8 times 10 to the negative 6 is equal to x squared. So to isolate and solve for x, we would take the square root. So 1.3 times 10 to the negative 3 is equal to x, was equal to the concentration of hydrogen ions. Now we can put that into our pH calculation and find out the pH. So pH is equal to negative log, the concentration of hydrogen. So that's equal to negative log 1.3 times 10 to the negative 3. And that's equal to 2.9. So that's the pH of our acid. So in our next example, we know that the Kb for methyl amine, CH3, NH2, is 4.6 times 10 to the negative 4 at 25 degrees Celsius. And we're being asked to calculate the pH of a 0 0.10 mole per liter solution of CH3, NH2. So remember, in this case, we are looking at, we'll be calculating the pOH, and then we'll have to subtract that from 14 to find the pH. So our balanced chemical equation is here, and we can see that everything is interacting in one-to-one -one ratios. So now we'll solve. So first we need to write our Kb expression. So Kb is equal to the concentration CH3 NH3 plus times the concentration of hydroxide ions over the concentration of CH3 NH2, the base. So we know the equilibrium constant. It's 4.6 times 10 to the negative 4. And that's equal to, remember, those will be 1 to 1 ratio. So we're going to say they're each x. So x squared over 0 0.010, so that's going to be 4.6 times 10 to the negative 6 is equal to x squared. We'll take the square root of both sides, so that's going to be 2.14 times 10 to the negative 3 is equal to x, which is equal to the concentration of hydroxide. Now that we have that value, we can calculate the pOH, because remember this is a base we're working with. So pOH is equal to negative log the concentration of OH. And that's equal to negative log that 
times 10 to the negative 3 moles per liter. So that's equal to negative 2.67, or the pOH is 2.67. And then to find the pH, we have to subtract. So that's going to be 14, because the pH plus the pOH is equal to 14. So 14 minus 2.67. And that is equivalent to 11.33. So again, we know we did our calculation properly because our pH is above 7, which makes sense because this was a base we were talking about. So remember, when you're finding pOH, you have to do that extra step to find the pH. So when you're working with bases, you have to subtract your pOH from the 14 to get the pH.